Hello, good morning, everybody. So let's start our session now. Uh, let me make sure that you can hear me. Can you hear me, all of you? All right, good. Thank you, Abdullah. Thank you, Zaid. Okay, good. Uh, so uh, yesterday we uh, recorded a lecture over two sections, basically section 4.5 and 4.6. 4.5, it's about the dimension of a vector space. And section six, uh, section 4.6, it was about changing bases. Uh, again, I'm assuming you looked at the recorded lecture and now we can go over that, see if you have questions, we can clarify things further. By the way, today I am getting a new writing pad and that will help me to write better than before. So hopefully that will be better than last time. Also, I'm making sure that I'm selecting the recording option here so this session can be recorded. Okay, uh, so let's start by talking about 4.5, the dimension, okay? Well, I'll give you a quick overview of that, then I'll see if you have questions, okay? Uh, or, or before that, let me, let me remember to stress here that I already put some exercises in Wiley Plus, so you can do them. Actually, you should do them as soon as possible. As we, usual, those will be graded by the computer and you can get bonus credit for doing those exercises, okay? All right. So now uh, let's start talking about uh, the dimension of a vector space. Well, in each vector space, you know that we can talk about a basis that can be used to represent your vector space. And if the number of vectors in your basis is finite, we say that is finite dimensional vector space and the dimension is the number of vectors in your basis. Okay. Uh, so, as I, did, as I did in the recorded lecture here, you have a vector space V, and you have a basis for that. Here you have a basis. And let's say in your basis, you have U1, U2, UK. So all you need is just to count the number of vectors in your basis. That will be the dimension of your vector space. And is there something we already observed from last time? It doesn't matter which basis you take for your vector space. They have the same number of vectors, OK? So basically, if one basis has three vectors, it means every other base must have three vectors. And that will be the dimension of your vector space. The dimension will be three in that case. Okay, and uh, in my recorded lecture, I summarized uh, a few vector spaces that we keep using, and uh, I told you I told you about uh, the dimension of each one of you of them. So here, dimension k, which is the number of vectors n b. Uh, let me share with you here uh, a summary table I did for the vector spaces. All right, so here I summarize some of the vector spaces that we used to uh, talk about. And now you can see a basis for each one of them and you can see the dimension. So for example, if you talk about R2, you can take here the standard basis 1, 0, 0, 1, and here the dimension is 2. If you talk about R3, you can take the standard basis. By the way, uh, is, this, is this screen clear to you now? All right, good, Zip. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, good. In case you cannot see it from your end, you can zoom. You can zoom and see it. See it better. So you can see now the pattern. You can see R2, R3. If you are talking about Rn, then then you can take this easy basis one zero 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 one zeros, and you keep going till you get zeros and one in the last component. So this is called the standard basis. This is kind of the, the easiest basis we like to deal with. Okay, and you can see here the dimension is n because you have n number of vectors. Okay, uh, if you talk about P1, and P1 here, it's the vector space of all polynomials of degree at most one. 
Okay, so we are going to use this a lot. P1, P2, Pn. Okay, P2, all polynomials of degree at most two. Okay, so you can see here y equals x squared plus x minus five. That is a polynomial of degree at most two, so it belongs to this vector space. Well, an easy basis for this is one x x squared. That is also called the standard basis, and that is actually what you used to do. If you remember, if you remember in your pre-calculus courses, in fact, in your high school courses, when you like a when you write a polynomial, you write it as a plus b x plus c x squared. Okay, or uh, if you are talking about higher degree, you can write it using those uh, basis vectors or those vectors that are uh, coming from the standard basis. Okay, so when we talk about Pn, the basis, the standard basis is 1x, x squared, and xn, as you can see here. And you can count them. How many do we have here? You can count them. They are n plus 1. So no matter what is n, when you take the vector space Pn, you know a basis for that, and you know the dimension. Similarly, if you are talking about the vector space of matrices, so here I'm taking M2 by 2. So this is, again, a standard basis. And if you want to talk about M, M by N, then again, you can give here a standard basis, and you will find you have MN vectors in your basis, so the dimension is MN. Okay? Now, all those examples about vector spaces with finite dimension. Okay? And uh, here... I'm giving you just an example of a vector space that has infinite dimension. Well, in this course, we're not going to bother too much about vector spaces with infinite dimension, but this is just an example to show you that we have vector spaces with infinite dimension. So for example, you can take P infinity, all polynomials, no matter what is the degree, okay? If you put all polynomials in one set, in one vector space that has infinite dimension, okay? And you can think about basis one, x, x squared, x cubed, you keep going. And in this case, in this case, you see that you cannot have a finite basis. Okay, so the dimension here is infinite. Okay, so this is about the dimension of a vector space. After that, in my lecture, I give you an example of a homogeneous linear system. Okay, then, you know, the solution of a linear homogeneous system is a subspace of your original vector space. And when you talk about a subspace, it means, again, you are talking about a vector space. A subspace is a vector space by itself. Then you ask the same question. Can you find a basis for the subspace? Can you find the dimension of that subspace? And that is, that is the example I gave you in the lecture. All right, so let me move to uh, the example in which I talk about uh, the subspace and the basis and the dimension. Or actually, I can give you a new example, not necessarily the one I already, uh, I already uh, gave in the lecture. Uh, let, me give you, uh, let me give you here a new uh, example, and let's, let's think about it. Okay, let's think about it together. So here is uh, my whiteboard. Okay. Here we have this homogeneous system. Let me write it down here. Uh, X solve this homogeneous system. X minus 2Y plus 7Z equals 0. Here negative 4X plus 8y plus 5z equals 0. And here, 2x minus 4y plus 3z equals 0. OK, so here, what do we have? We have a homogeneous linear system. OK, we know how to solve this. So that is not the question. The question is, when you solve it, you get a set of solutions. OK? Now, we prove that the set of solutions of this homogeneous linear system is a subspace. Is a subspace of what? It's a subspace of the vector space that we are working in. And here, since you have three variables, you have x, y, z. So it means we are doing our job. We 
are doing our job in R3. Okay, so now you solve you solve this system. You all of you know how to solve it. I mean that's not new. It's chapter one. Okay, so here I'm going to give you two minutes. We try to solve this, and here I try to help you just by writing the final answer. Okay, so uh, please, uh, yeah, uh, please uh, take two minutes. I'm going to give you two minutes. Solve this homogeneous system. So let's solve it together. Okay, so I'm going to do it, and you guys do it, and we then share the answer. Okay. So here the coefficient matrix is one, negative two, seven, negative four, eight, five, two, negative four, three. You can solve it in any way you want. You can solve it using uh, elementary operations. All right, so here I use the computer to get the reduced row echelon form. So if you are doing it by hand, you are slower than me. So here, reduced row echelon form is this one. Uh, what is that here? One, negative two. Zero, 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 one, and here zero, zero, zero. Now all you need is to write the solution. Okay, guys, uh, whether you finished the uh, reduced ocean form or not, here I am giving you the final answer. You can leave some space, you can finish it in your convenient time. So now you have the reduced row echelon form. Can you write the solution set? Can any of you say or help us here to write the solution set? If you want to use microphone and say something. Uh, okay, uh, X2 is a free. Okay. So X2 is a free, I agree with you. X2 is a free. What about X3? It's zero, okay. X3 is zero. What about X1? It is 2 T. Yes, it is 2 T. 2 X2, which is 2 T. Okay, so now, now we got the solution. So the solution says, is all vectors in this form, 2t, 0, uh, no, t, and 0, such that t belongs to R. Uh-huh, okay. Now, this is the solution set. Well, that is what we had in chapter 1, actually. So, so far, there is nothing in here. 
Well, here is the new thing. We need to write this as a clear subspace with the basis, and we need to identify the dimension. Well, all you need is just to toy with this solution and write it as T into 2, 1, 0, such that T belongs to R, and that is span of one single vector to one zero. It is the span of this vector. And this vector by itself forms a basis for our vector space, uh, for our subspace, which is the solution space. Okay? So here you can see now uh, basis. Just take this single vector and put it, put it here, and the dimension of the solution space is one. Okay, guys, is this one clear here? All right. Okay, good. Now, let me ask you, let me ask you a few questions here before I erase this. Uh, what is the largest dimension you can have for your solution space? Suppose I'm giving you here another, another homogeneous linear system. Okay. What is the smallest dimension you can have, and what is the largest dimension you can have for the solution space, for the subspace you get from the solution? Any of you? Does not, does it depend on the pivot? Okay, uh, it depends. It depends originally in your on your system. Okay. Now the exact dimension, yes, the exact dimension depends on the pivots in your reduced row echelon four, or it depends on the number of three variables. But I'm not asking you about the exact dimension. I'm asking you about what is the largest dimension you can have and what is the smallest dimension you can have. For the homogeneous for the solution of a homogeneous linear system. The smallest one, largest three. Uh, okay, well, if we are talking about three equations in three unknowns, well, let's think about you are saying the largest is, is a three. How how can this happen? The largest is a three. What does that mean? It means, how many free variables do you have? Free variables. How many free variables? If you want the dimension, largest two, yes. Because if you want all variables to, to be free, it means you have no equations to start with. So if you have here n variables or n unknowns, it means the largest dimension you can have for your subspace is n minus 1. So in this example, if I change the coefficients here, the largest you can have is 2, because I have three variables. If I want to have all of them free, it means I don't have equations to start with. If I have at least one equation, then the dimension will be 2. Okay. So here, the dimension of the subspace is related to the number of three variables in your system. Let me make this more clear. So let me start, let me start here a new page and think about this one. Solve 2x plus y minus z plus 2w equals 0. 
Yes, yes, the dimension of the subspace is going to be the number of free variables in your system. Yes, that is a conclusion you can make now, yes. So here, I'm giving you this example. How many equations do we have? We have only one equation. How many, how many uh, variables do we have? How many unknowns? X, Y, Z, W, four. All right, so we have a homogeneous linear system with four unknowns and one equation. Now, if I ask you to solve this, well, that's very easy because it's just one equation. So right away here, you can say here, W is a free, and you can take a T, one, uh, Z is a free, and you can take a T, two, W is a free, you can take a T, three, and x is not free. X is x is uh, what? X is going to be uh, negative two w, so it's going to be negative two t one. Yes, negative two t one plus t two minus uh, t three, and we divide all of that by two. Divide this by two. Divide this by two. All right, so now we know the solution. The solution is very easy. Uh, okay, uh, okay, uh, good sir. So now here we divide it by two, so it's fine. Now let's, uh, let's now write the solution, okay? So what is the solution set? The solution set is, let me keep this here, uh, okay, solution set. Uh, it is all vectors in this form. So x here is negative t1 plus one half t2 minus one half t3. And uh, that is x. Y is t3. And z is t2. And w is t1. Such that T1, T2, T3 are real numbers. Okay, now you have the solution. That is, again, this is chapter one. Up to here, it is chapter one, okay? Now, here is the new thing. Can you write a basis for this solution set? This is a subspace. Can you write a basis for this subspace? And what is the dimension? Well, you observe the dimension here, so right away you can see the dimension is a three, okay? But now can you find a basis? Yes, the dimension is a three. Can you write a basis here? Let me give you one minute and please write here a basis. Write it on a piece of paper, on a piece of paper please, and you can, well, maybe it's difficult for you to write, so you can, dimension of basis is a three. Well, the dimension, it is not the dimension of the basis, it's the dimension of the subspace. So yeah, the dimension of the subspace is a three. Can you write, can you write a basis? Yes, Salama, can you write a basis? Well, to do that, all you need is just to toy with this solution and write it as a span of linearly independent vectors. So how do we do that? Well, let, let's now, uh, cancel this here, and write this as, look how we write it. We write it, T1 multiplied by a vector plus T2 multiplied by a vector plus T3 multiplied by a vector. T1, as before, T1, T2, and T3 they are in R. Now, can you tell me what are those vectors? Look at your solution and tell me those vectors. So here you have negative one, uh, then yes, then zero, then zero, then one, that is correct. Then the second vector is going to be one half, uh, 
and then zero. Uh, uh, no, the second one is one half. Then you have zero. Then one. Then zero. Then the third vector you have negative one third, and you have one. You have zero zero. Yes, correct, Salam. Okay. So now you can see what we want. Once you write it that in this way, then it is clear that this subspace is spanned. This subspace is spanned by. This is the span of those three linearly independent vectors. Here is one vector. Here is the second vector. Well, I can multiply this by two. I can write it as one, zero, two, one, just for the fun of it. And the other one, I can multiply it by three, or I can take one uh, third out. So here you write it as negative one, and here three, here zero, here zero. So this is the span of those three linearly independent vectors. Those three vectors, they are linearly independent. They span our solution set. And in that case, we know the basis. We know the basis for this subspace. So basis here is those three vectors. Okay, so here is V1, here is V2, here is V3, and now I can put this as V1, V2, V3. This is my basis. It has dimension, I mean, the subspace has dimension 3, and those are the vectors that I want in my basis. So is this one clear? Any question about it? Okay, Leanne, Salama, okay, good. Okay. So basically, when you have a homogeneous linear system, you solve it as we did in chapter one, is the smallest dimension zero. Oh, yes, we did not answer this question about the smallest dimension. What is the smallest dimension? The smallest dimension is when you get the trivial solution as your unique solution. It is possible that when you solve a system, you get only the trivial solution. And in that case, your solution will be only the trivial subspace. And that has dimension zero. Yes, the smallest dimension you can have is zero. And here, as you observe, we have four variables. The dimension, it was three. OK? And if you want to get higher dimension, in that case, you need this equation to disappear. And in that case, you don't have a system to start with. OK? So now we talked about dimension. We talked about how to solve a homogeneous system and write your, uh, we write bases as v1, v2, v3, and that's it. Yes. Yes. Now, guys, you have to be careful about how you write it here. Because from my experience, I found students, they mix things. So here, when they write, they mix the solution set. Here, the solution set, they mix that with the span, and they mix that with the basis. Well, they are related, yes, but you know how to write them in a logical, correct way. OK, so this is how we do it. Solution, write that. Unfold that and write it as a span of certain vectors linearly independent vectors, and from there, you take the vectors and you put them in a set that will be your basis. So that's all about the dimension of a vector space and a subspace. Now, we move to the next section and talk about change of basis. Any question before we move? OK. All right. OK, Hada. So now we move to the next section and now talk about uh, talk about uh, change of basis. This is 4.6, change of basis.
change of basis. Basis here, it is more than one basis. So it's with E, not R. Okay. Uh, so again, I'll, I'll uh, go over the main ideas here and I give you the chance to ask questions. So when you have a vector space, you can have several bases. Okay. Each one of you can taste it and can just use it. Okay. So the question is, when you have here two bases, basis one, and here you have basis two. Okay. Now you can say you can say here, I want to take a vector. Uh, let me here go back here. Uh, you take a vector in V. Remember what we talked about last time? We talked about coordinate vectors. So you can take this vector and this basis, let's call it B, and this basis, let's call it B prime. So you can talk here about writing V with respect to the first basis. So you write the coordinate vector of V with respect to B. And again here, you can write V with respect to B prime. And the question is, how do they relate? So you understand the question or the problem that we're talking about here. We're talking about a vector space with two different bases. And you take a vector and you represent your vector using the first basis then you represent your vector using the second basis. That's what we call the coordinate vector, okay? The question is, how are they related? The coordinate vector with respect to B and the coordinate vector with respect to B prime. Well, they are related through a matrix, we call it the transition matrix. The matrix B prime to B. Okay, so this we can prove it as a theorem, but here you just take the conclusion of that. Okay, so this is basically the idea. Now the question is, how do you do this, find this, how do you find this, and how do you find this? Well, in this equation you have three things, correct? You have V with respect to B, you have V with respect to B prime, and you have the transition matrix. Well, you know, from your high school, if you have an equation and you have three things you don't know, you need to know two of them, you can find the other, correct? So if you know here this guy here, and you know this guy here, then you can find this guy here. Or if you know this guy here, and you know this matrix, you can find this guy here, correct? All right. So we have three things, we need to know two of them, and we can use that to find the third, okay? In other words, think about it, it is like you have dollars, and you go to the exchange, money exchange, and you exchange that into dirhams. When you go to the uh, money exchange, you find they have exchange rates, and they are putting that on a board, and they will use the exchange rate to exchange your money. The transition matrix is the exchange rate. Okay, It will help you to exchange your money from dollars to dirhams or from dirhams to dollars. Okay, That is the idea. Now, the question is, how do you find this transition matrix T, B prime, B? Well, let me write that, and then I'll give you an example. Um, running out of space here. Okay, let me write it up here. It seems I skipped uh, some space at the beginning. So here, T, B prime, B, is the following matrix. Okay, uh, you take, okay, I don't want to confuse you with the notation again, so let me write it here uh, using the same notation. So here I'm going to use uh, B to be U1, U2, UK, and 
the new basis e prime equals u prime the same as the notation in your book u1 prime u2 prime u k prime okay so this is the basis b this is the basis b prime and now you take u1 prime and you write it with respect to b you take u2 prime and you write it with respect to b and you keep going till the end you write uk prime with respect to b so here here what we are doing we are taking look how we write it here the the actually the way we write it here sometimes it's it's confusing and we just uh, mix things up so we have to be careful here uh, so the transition matrix t p prime to b we take u1 prime so you take the vectors in your second basis and you write them in write them in terms of the first basis so what you get here you get a coordinate vector here you get coordinate vector and here you get another coordinate vector and another coordinate vector all those coordinate vectors you put them in a matrix that is your transition matrix okay so this is the idea here I'm, I'm just going over the general idea now we can take specific example and do that okay so any question before i erase this page and move to a specific example all right so all right so let's go and take specific example here okay so i'm going to start a uh, new page here and uh, confusing need to see an example yes yes Huda, i know uh, so i'm going to take an example so I i'm going to start as usual by an easy example uh, and i'll take one different from the one i gave in the recorded lecture okay just to make it as simple as possible so let's take our vector space v to be r2 okay now, let's take two bases. So basis one or basis B. Let's take this to be the standard basis that is easy. Zero, one, and here, one, zero. Okay, now, can you give me another basis? Any of you, if you have a microphone and you wanna say it, you can do that. You can raise your hand. I'll let you the chance. I give you the chance to speak if you want to. Give me a second basis for R2. One, two, five, six. Okay, I'll take that. Uh, one, two, five, six. Now, before I move to the next step, the first one is clear. This is the standard basis. We know that. It's very easy. But this one is not the standard one. So, uh, Gulzar, can you tell me why it is a basis? How do you know this one is a basis? I need to make sure it's a basis here before I start doing my job. Because if it is not a basis, what I talked about doesn't make sense. Both of them, for sure, they have to be basis. Each one of them has to be a base for a uh, basis for your vector space. So the second one, why it is a basis? Anybody? This is very easy, you have two vectors. You have only two vectors in this set, as it has the dimension same as the B. Okay, because it is independent. Okay, uh, okay, lean, uh, span, Look, it's linearly independent, multiply by k, and you won't get them from each other. Linearly independent. All right. Okay. Okay. So I'm receiving here good answers. Uh, this is a basis because two things. Number one, they are linearly independent because you cannot multiply one of them by number and get the other. They are two vectors. It's easy to observe. You don't need to do computations. Okay. Now, because they are linearly independent, and because there are two, and remember what we said, we said all vector space, I mean, the vector space has a fixed dimension, no matter which basis you take. So we know the dimension of R2 is two, 
So if you find two linearly independent vectors, that is good enough to say we have a basis. Okay? So those are linearly independent. And because they are two and the dimension is two, so for sure they span R2. So now we have two bases. Okay? All right. Now let's take a vector V. One, negative one. Okay. Now, what is the coordinate vector V with respect to P prime? Uh, well, uh, let's take it with respect to B because that is easy to find. What is the coordinate vector of V with respect to B? The coordinate vector. Remember, how do we find the coordinate vector here? You now need to write V as a linear combination of the vectors. Yes, good. Uh, yes, Lean. Uh, so we write this vector V as a linear combination of the vectors in B here. And because this is the standard basis, so that is very easy. So it is 1, negative 1. Okay, so this is the coordinate vector. It doesn't hurt. We can write it like this, 1, negative 1. And that is the same as V because we are using the standard basis here. Okay, now here is the question. What is, let me use different color to stress that. What is V with respect to P prime? Well, this one is not obvious, correct? Now, here you can do it in two ways. One of them is find the linear combination of those two vectors. You multiply C1 by this vector, C2 by this vector, and you set that equals V, and you solve for C1, C2, and you find that. Okay? So that is, that is what we uh, talked about when we discussed we can do it as we can solve this. Uh, we can solve C1 multiplied by 1, 2 plus C2 multiplied by 5, 6 equals 1, negative 1. And what you get here, what you get here, it will be your answer, C1, C2. Well, that's one way to do it, but we don't want to do it this way. We want to use the transition matrix, okay? So here, I don't want to do it in this way. I want to show you how to do it using the transition matrix. So here, using the transition matrix, using the transition matrix, you can, you can do the following. You can say here V with respect to P prime is the transition matrix B to B prime and here V with respect to B. Look at it again and think about think about what we have and what we want. This is what we have. We this is what we have, V with respect to B. Here we have it here. Here it is. This we have it. Now this we want to find it. This we don't know it, but we can find it. So if you know this matrix T, all you need is to multiply T by this vector, you get what you want. Okay? So the question is, okay, how do we find T? Well, T, as we said before, you write it as T, uh, we have T from uh, B to B prime, yes. Uh, B to B prime, T from B to B prime. This we said, it is going to be the matrix you get from writing, uh, okay, so here you get the matrix from U1, you write it with respect to uh, P prime here, 
than u2 with respect to b1. And my, my u1 is in b. So where is my u1? This is my u1. This is my u2. And this is my u1 prime, my u2 prime. So basically, this is what I need to do or what we need to do. We need to find those. Well, uh, ask yourself, how do we find how do we find u1 with respect to p prime? If you want to do that, it means you need to solve this. You take u1, and u1 here is, uh, again, it is the standard uh, 0, 1 vector. And you write it as C1 into the vector that you gave me, which is, I have to keep looking back here, 1, 2, 1, 2, plus C2 into uh, 5, 6, 5, 6. Now, you solve for C1 and C2. Well, this is... This is again, we are in chapter one here. Okay, so now you solve you solve for C1, C2, and you can find them. But let's do it later. Let's now find U2 P prime. What is this? Well, if you want this, it means you need to solve this. One zero equals uh, C3 into one two plus C4 into 5, 6. Okay, guys. Now, in chapter 1, we used to solve each one of those by writing the augmented matrix, and you solve using any method you want. Now, here, instead of doing it twice, we can write it as one package. We can solve all this in one method which is u from the first, uh, let me use a different color. From the first, what you get is uh, augmented matrix. The augmented matrix is one, five, two, six, and here is zero, one. Correct, guys? Is this the augmented matrix of the first, of the first system? Are you following me? Okay, good. All right, good. Okay. Okay. Now, let's get the augmented matrix for the second system. Well, you are going to see that the first part is the same, 1, 5, 2, 6. All we need is just to change this column. So 0, 1, we need to change it into 1, 0. So instead of changing that, we put it here, and let me use different color for that. So one, zero. So now we are like putting two augmented matrices in one package. So instead of doing elementary row operations for each one and repeating ourselves, if we do it now, we do it kind of at the same time. We do it for this one. We do it for this one. And at the same time, we do it for this one, OK? So basically here, you do elementary row operations in one shot rather than doing it twice. When you do that, you are going to get here, uh, well, I'm going to skip the details. It, it is easy. This is two by two, so it's very easy to do it. But I'm going to save, save a couple of steps. And when we do it, I'll give you two minutes. You can do it together. So this is going to be 1, 0, 0, 1. And you are going to get here a matrix. Let me do that here. Uh, so I have two rows, and I have four columns. And in that case, I have, uh, let me see here, uh, I have. One five six one five two six and here zero one five zero uh, so 
0.15260110. All right. And we get here uh, this matrix. Okay, I'll write it and you can double check what you are doing, compare it with what I got. So here 5 over 4, here negative 3 over 2, here negative 1 over 4, and here is 1 half. What I got here on the right hand side, negative 1 over 4, 1 half, that is the last row. Yeah, okay. You can double check. You can double check. So what we got here is okay. Good. Thank you. So what we got here is the transition matrix that we are looking for. It is T uh, uh, from uh, B to B prime. T from B to B prime. Is it clear how we got this matrix T? All right. Okay. Good. Okay. So now, okay. Good. Uh, okay. Now we take this matrix T and we go back to this equation. So this is T B to B prime. We substitute it here. We got this one. We got this one already. And now all you need is to multiply T by this vector. It will give you the answer to this. So we can do it. That is easy matrix. We multiply it by uh, v uh, b, which is uh, uh, where is v b? It is one negative one, and in this case you get five over four plus three over two, and you get negative one fourth minus one fifth. That will be eleven over four, and this will be what? This is negative one minus two negative three over four. So basically here. You go down, you substitute, and you find you find the answer. The answer is going to be uh, 11 over 4. Okay, good. It's the same answer I got. Negative 3 over 4. Uh, negative. Yes. Okay, good. Mira, Mira, how did we find VP? Uh, did you join us late or ooh, here is VP? VP here, you write it as a linear combination. You write V as a linear combination of the vectors in B. And this is the standard basis, so it's very easy to, uh, to get it. So one negative one, you get it from those two vectors by multiplying this by one and multiply this by negative one. Uh, or is it the other way around? Uh, did, I, did I flip that? You multiply u1 by 1. You multiply u2 by a negative 1. So you get, uh, I think I did, uh, OK. Uh, I think I did a mistake. I flipped them, correct? Uh, if you multiply this by negative 1, so that is, yeah, all I need is to go back and change all of those. Uh, that, that is. That is easy to fix like this. This is U2, and this is U1. So in that case, in that case, it will be one negative one, one negative one. That is correct. Okay. Uh, if we do that, I think it probably we need to switch those. You can double check that, guys. I think here I, I just changed the order so. Maybe this will be here, this will be here, okay? But uh, it, it is the same steps and the same uh, work, okay? Uh, so when you multiply this by this, you get this. Now, you can do it using what we said here. You should be able to find the same answer. So if I do it 11 over 4 and negative 3 over 4, so that is negative 15 over 4, negative 15 over 4. Look, guys, if we substitute here, C1 is 11 over 4, and C2 is negative 3 over 4, we get negative 
15 over 4 and 11 4 over 4, that is negative 4 over 4, that is negative 1. So here, this is just because I switch them. So maybe this should be this should be down here and this should be up here. Okay, so that is that is a mistake because I just swap those. U2, U1. Okay, but uh, you can figure that out. All you need all you need is just to change U1 in the place of U2. So we, yes, you switch U1 in place of U2. That is a mistake I did at the beginning, and in that case, in that case, it will be fine. Okay. So here, uh, this is uh, probably I can fix it by going here. And uh, let me see that. Uh, yes, I can fix it by changing this matrix. Well, let me do it now so I don't confuse you with that. Uh, let me go here and. Uh, switch this as one zero and this zero and this one and in that case uh, the matrix will be negative three over two five over four one half and negative one fourth so let me write that here Uh, I'm going to switch those two, so this in place of this, and this in place of this, and in that case, I get uh, this will be in place of this, and this will be in place of this. That is what you are going to get, okay? And that means, that means uh, those will be flat. This will be here when you multiply, this will be here, and this will be here. Okay, so here it is a matter of just uh, the order. You change the order. Uh, the order we did at the beginning, it was, uh, we did a mistake in the order, and that is the reason we got here the order switched. Okay, so basically that's the change of basis. This example that we took, it is simple, two vectors in each uh, basis, but you can think about if you have three vectors or four vectors, or if you are doing your job in Rn, it will be the same idea, okay? One last thing here I should stress, which is this transition matrix is always invertible. So always when you do it here, you are going to get the identity here. Okay? You get the identity. Any question? That's the end of change of basis. Basically, we covered the ideas. Okay, thank you, Huda. All right, guys, so stay safe, take care, and that is the end of our session for today. Uh, for our next meeting, it will be next week. Remember, uh, Monday, Monday will be the deadline for your online exercises. Please do them, do them. The deadline is Monday. Okay, so uh, thank you, Munib. All right. Uh, Thank you. I'm now going to stop the recording and we will see you next week. Have a good weekend, all of you. Bye.